city life got you down, kiddies? Looking for a home on Derange? Well, look no further, because I got exactly what you want. It's a charming tomb with a view. Think of it as your own little house on the scary. <laughs> You're not interested? What's the matter? Afraid you can't get a morgue edge? Oh well, that's exactly how the woman in tonight's tortured tale feels. She's upset because there's a killer loose in her neighborhood. In a putrid property, I call. Maniac at large. Bro, man. <laughs> Thought so. Hey, check this hey. out. Another stiff in the park. Hey. Hey, cool. Grady? <laughs> What's going on here? You're defacing public property. Rub that out right now. No. <laughs> what was that? No eraser. <laughs> How dare you behave in here like you do in school? Brady, escort these boys out of the library. <laughs> they may return when they're ready to act like civilized youngsters. Yeah, Brady, take us down. Margaret, would you please attend to that?
outside now. What a sad life. Yeah, and dangerous. With that killer walking around the streets. I tried to get Mitch's Pritchard to let the street people stay in hand until they get that guy. You know how far that got. You don't like Mrs. Pritchard much, do you? I don't care for the way she treats people. She's always bossing everybody around. Acting so damn high and mighty. Well, she's a little uh, abrupt. Yeah, well, you only been here two weeks. You know, it does get worse. I mean, you really don't want to work late tonight, now, do you? I mean, considering what's been going down in the neighborhood. Hey, work tonight. No, no, Mrs. Pritchard didn't say anything about that to me. You see? She's already got authorization for overtime for both of us. I heard her on the phone. Chat, chat, chat. You two are as bad as the children. Margaret, could I see you for a moment? In my office. I have to look at that mural each morning to remind myself that I work in a library. What a sewer. You should have seen Park Lane 20 years ago. People used to dress up to come in here. Now, we have to hire security guards to protect the books from the people. You really shouldn't distract Brady, dear. He has a somewhat limited attention span as it is. Your encouraging his companionship doesn't help matters. Well, I wasn't encouraging him. We were just talking about working late tonight. I didn't know about that. Yeah, it must have slipped my mind. Well, I need you to help me with the inventory for the city book sale this weekend. Is there someone you need to call? You never mentioned your family. Do you need to call him? No. I, I mean, that's all right. I I'll stay. Well, good. I'll order in sandwiches. We can have a picnic. Oh, and Margaret, do try to keep your voice down. Library matters don't come naturally to all of us. Just remember, if you want to talk, you're welcome to come in here and talk. But out there, you must be a little mice. Let's be checked out. There's no card in it. Reference books are for library use only. Would you give that one to me? Thank you. It's a shame, really. Such a fascinating book. If the police were to read it, they might understand what kind of man their serial killer is. Well, that's what they think he is. A serial killer. But he's not. No, serial killers are hunters looking for a particular kind of victim. Not our killer. His victims have got nothing in common. Apart from the fact they're all men. That's pure coincidence, really. I have a theory about his next victim. Interesting. You ought to be. Because the next one's going to be a woman. sets him off. That's what I keep thinking about. But it could be the city that does it. You know, living in such close quarters to so many strangers, people you hate, all of them wanting to hurt you before you hurt them. We're like rabbits in a warren. 
They panic when they're frightened. They get all frenzied. And you know what they do then? They eat each other. quite understand. Why did you bring that man into the employees only area? I, I, I didn't. Would you please take these down to the basement? She wasn't here at the time of the theft. Theft? Five typewriters. Oh, that's what Lieutenant Jameson is here about. Is there something wrong, dear? I saw a man in the basement. It was horrible. He had a knife. He had this big knife. Uh, excuse me, is that the knife? May I sing that, please? The knife? Yes. Oh, no, no. A, a gang boy left this. I see. So you're saying that there was another knife? Yes, in the basement. I saw this man, but when Grady went down, he was gone. Are you quite sure about what you saw? Do you think I'm making this up? Well, of course not. Why would I think that? I did not imagine this. I saw someone in the basement. Well, here's your victim. You mean he was ripping a book? Those hooligans. Now, listen, I could pick him up on vandalism charges, but I don't think it's going to stick. No, those boys were gone before you sent me down here, Mrs. Pritchard. I, it must have been someone else. It could have been that killer. It's kids, ma'am. Trust me. It could have been that killer. Thank you for stopping by, Lieutenant Jameson. Absolutely. No problem. Now, listen, if you have any more trouble, I want you to call me. Okay? Thank you. And you too, ma'am. Thank you. All right. You have a good night. Yes. Hmm. What a nice man. There, you see? There's nothing to worry about. Mrs. Pritchard, there's one more problem. Now, I don't want to get Grady into trouble or anything, but he has been drinking. And it just seems to me with everything that's been happening in the past few days that we ought to have a real security officer. I have tried to replace Grady, but he is a civil servant. It's almost impossible. So, I've pretty much decided to deal with him in another way. Oh, goodness. Look at the time. But what are we going to do? I mean, we need protection. You are overreacting, dear. The serial killer business sells a lot of newspapers. Aren't you afraid? I think that everybody in this world gets what he or she deserves. If you put out fear and negativity, that's what comes back to call on you. The library's closing in ten minutes.
Made such progress today. Now murderers are so fascinating when you get to know them. Can I show you something? John Reginald Halliday Christie. Doesn't look like a killer, does he? But he was. Huh. And a necrophiliac to boot. Not like our man. Whatever our man looks like. I mean, for all we know, our killer could be some dapper little man in an old trench coat and who wears little round glasses. <laughs> then one day he snaps and goes berserk. Yeah, I can see our man working himself up into quite a little frenzy. <laughs> it's what you have to do to kill with a knife, you know? Like our man always does. I mean, it's harder than you think to slash a man's throat. You gotta get close. Close enough to feel their breath on your hand. Close enough to look into their eyes and see the blood spur. Please stop. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I, I do need to close up. I have the other work to do tonight. Are you working late by yourself? Yes. No, I mean Mrs. Pritchard is working late also. Oh. I thought she went out. She's coming right back. Would you like me to stay until she returns? No. I mean, uh, we have a security guard. Oh, I thought I saw him leave. You know, I wouldn't be very smart with all this unpleasantness in the park. You know, the murder last night took place just about this time. Some poor homeless person, wandering all alone, asks the wrong stranger for some change and... <gasps> you really must go. It's after hours. check this book out. Um, could you uh, leave it somewhere handy so I can get it when I come back? Come back? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Uh, Till tomorrow. I've really enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> uh... I'm not going any place after all. Locked in. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. Good night. Good night. Be careful now.
Thank God you're back. What the world is going on around here? He was first at the front door, and then he was at the back. It was that crazy man, that, that maniac. He wanted me to open the door for him, and of course I wouldn't do that. Oh, he was huge. He was all hunched over. Oh, that's Mr. Garvin. I let him in after nine. He works late. Poor man, he has some kind of bone disorder. You see? He was just dropping off some books. Calm yourself, dear. I am sure that there is no one out there. No, he is out there. I know that he is. I tried to use the telephone, but that maniac cut the wires. I turned the phone off. The switch is underneath. I'll show you. You cut the phone off? On purpose? It's so distracting and... Well, we are closed after all. Come on upstairs, dear. I want to talk to you. I know you're upset about these murders, but I can assure you, you're quite safe here. The newspapers have built up this maniac character. He did this, he did that. What nonsense. What if it isn't a man? It could just as easily be a woman. <laughs> That'd surprise everyone, wouldn't it? Where's Grady? Hmm? You sent him away, didn't you? Maybe you... Maybe you killed him. What? Yeah, you, know, you hated him. You hate everyone. You said yourself, and people get what they deserve. When you think he deserved to die. You think I'm the murderer? Now you want to kill me? Oh, that's ridiculous. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! afraid anymore. I showed you. <laughs> Miss Pritchard? I was checking the back doors and I heard the alarm. Resign. Move on again. <laughs> I liked it here. But this city made me nervous. So much crime. I don't like being afraid all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry about giving such short notice. I hope you won't think too badly of me. Well, kiddies, I guess that's knife in the big city for you. <laughs> Boy, do I feel sorry for Margaret. Looks like it's just one dead-end job after another. <laughs> You'll be happy to know that I made a sale. The negotiations were fierce. But after I threw in a couple of acres, the rest was easy. <laughs> There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs>